Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another video, and today I'm going to be getting into the scriptures, and I want to talk about something that is very powerful, and that is end time prophecy. We know that the apocalypse and the end times are right out in front of us. I really feel like this is, we're living in the latter days, and I do believe that Jesus is coming back soon, so we need to be ready because when he comes, we're going to be with him in perpetuity. And it's really going to be exciting for all of us. So we need to be ready, the scriptures say, because our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming back for you and for me. And we can see all the signs all around us, beloved. We see everything that's going on, wars in the Middle East, Israel. We see what's happening with moral decay in our world, not just the United States, but all over the globe. We see so many prophecies being fulfilled. So I want to jump right into the book of Revelation chapter 20. And I believe that God has a word for you today. But before I get into the Bible and I read this, uh, this devotional, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button right now. And if you could put a like on this video as well, I would really appreciate it really help it out a lot. So anyway, Revelation chapter 20. And I want to read verse 7, and I'll continue reading a few more scriptures. And what does it say? Revelation 20 verse 7, it says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So the devil is going to be bound for a thousand years. So the tribulation is going to happen. We know that tribulation after the Antichrist signs this peace tree or confirms it, and it is affirmed and it is done. We know that he's the one that's going to be the Antichrist, the one who confirms the peace treaty. And then the abomination of desolation will happen, which is he's going to break that peace treaty after three and a half years. And then there's going to be three and a half years left of pure evil and a great tribulation a lot of things are going to happen wars rumors of wars and, and, and it's going to be things falling from the sky cosmic disturbances are going to be occurring there's going to be so many things that are going to be happening that are going to be so horrendous during that time and we need to be prepared beloved as we see these days approaching and so then after the tribulation is complete the devil is going to be bound for a thousand years. This is what I want to talk about today. He's going to be bound for a thousand years. And we as believers are going to be on the earth with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to be living on this earth for a thousand years. And we are going to be praising the Lord. Those who have been uh, caught up in the clouds and those who are in heaven are going to come down on the earth. And we're going to be spending all the next thousand years on the earth. And those who... I took the mark of the beast, those who were wicked, those who were satanic, they're going to be judged and they're going to be cast into hell. And then a thousand years, the devil is going to be bound, as the scriptures say as I continue reading. It says, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So he's going to be bound for a thousand years. And um, this is something that is said, and it's in the book of Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, it says, and he laid hold on the dragon and that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So a thousand years he's going to be there. We're going to be living on the earth. The earth is going to be populated. There's going to be nations. There's going to be people who worship God. And there's going to be others who do not get saved. And in the book of Isaiah, as you read Isaiah chapter 65, those who don't get saved and, and those who are on the earth that are born during the millennial reign, there's going to be death during that time. They're going to be dying. If they die without Jesus, where do you think they go? They go to hell. So the earth is going to be populated over that time. And it's going to be people who get saved and people who don't, unfortunately. I mean, I always wonder why won't people get saved during the millennial reign? When they're on the earth for a thousand years, you figure Jesus is Lord. Let's get saved. You know, let's follow him because he is the true God. And you say, how could this be possible that people wouldn't serve the Lord and people wouldn't worship him? Here's the reason. Jesus was on the earth, and people, even when he was doing miracles, he was raising people from the dead. He was performing all kinds of miraculous signs and wonders. He was the son of God, and they didn't follow him then. So you know what? Men's hearts are evil, and so they're going to turn. Some of them are going to turn. Some of them are going to be saved, and there's going to be others who won't. Now, what happens? It says, Revelation 20, verse 7, it says, When the thousand years are expired, that's the millennial is over thousand years on the earth 
after the tribulation period. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. He was bound a thousand years. God is going to allow him to be loosed one more time. You say, why would he even go through all of this? Wouldn't he just buy, you know, put him in hell and after the tribulation is over and just, that's it? You know, have the devil just be, you know, in hell forever and it just stop this? God continually wants to see people get saved. God continually wants people to rejoice in him. And, you know, and he wants to give that opportunity because, you know what, the more people who are born, more people have the opportunity to be saved. And this is God's heart. And so he extends it out a little bit more to try to give people a chance, especially during the millennial reign when he's ruling and reigning for a thousand years. What does it say in verse number eight? After he is let go out of the prison, Satan, after a thousand years, he said, he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. So he's going to be loosed, the devil, for a short time. He's going to go out and he's going to deceive the nations. He's going to tell the nations that they can rise up against Jesus and his kingdom. And he can destroy Jesus and his kingdom, just like he did when he was in heaven, when he says, I will ascend above God. I will rise up and be as God. And then he was kicked out of heaven. He's going to do it one more time. He's going to deceive the nations. He's going to tell the nations, hey, you know what? You don't need to be under his rule. We need to take over. Let's take out everything that's God and let's try to rule and reign ourselves. And he's going to deceive people into thinking they can, when obviously they can't because God, all he has to do is speak and that's it. It's over. So he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. Here, Gog and Magog is not like Turkey, Russia in the north. That's not a geographical location. It's symbolic for the wicked, evil forces because it's talking about the four quarters of the earth. That means all parts of the earth, people everywhere. He's going to deceive, to turn against God and his people. And they're going to do it. They're going to follow Satan. And it says, and he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. And it says, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. It's going to be a, just an amazing number of people. And you know what? They're going to try to gather together to battle against God and his people after the thousand-year millennial reign. I mean, the devil, he's so... He's a dumb angel, I'll tell you that, to try to mess with God who created everything, and he's all-powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. And when you're saved, you're with him. He is your protector. He's your guide. He's your everything. And he was so evil that he, and prideful that he tried to come against God. And here's his end. Verse number, he says that he's going to deceive the number, which is as the sand of the sea. It's going to be so many people on the earth that are going to turn, and they're going to follow the devil. This can't be us as believers because once you're saved and you have your glorified body on the earth, you cannot be deceived. Those who are put their trust in Christ aren't going to be the ones that get deceived. These are the people who didn't place their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look what it says in verse number nine. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed, encompassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, which is Israel, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. It just took one split second. That was it. You know, they came in, the devil deceived the nations. Instead of the nations repenting and turning to God, they decided that they were going to rise up with the devil. They were deceived, you know. And what happened? God says, I'm going to send fire down. It took one, that's all he has to do is speak. And he can just consume anything. He's a consuming fire. And you know what? These people were deceived so much. They did this on their own volition. And you know what happened? Because of it, they made a very, very bad mistake. And, and look, at, look what it says in verse 10. It says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The devil that deceived the people on the earth were ca was cast into the lake of fire forever. So that's the end of the devil. Once the millennial reign is over, he's going to be loosed from his prison after a thousand years, he's going to deceive the, na the nations, the people on the earth, as the you know, innumerable number of people. And then literally what's going to happen is God is just going to speak and it's going to decimate everything. The devil is going to be destroyed. These people who are deceived are going to get cast into the lake of fire. Then the new Jerusalem comes. We're going to be with God forever. The new heaven, the new earth, we're going to be able to spend it with God forever. The new heaven 
is the earth, the sky, you know, the uh, outer space, the first and second heaven. But God's throne is always there. But he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, meaning the earth, the sky, the outer space. The first heaven is the earth and the firmament. The second heaven is the, uh, you know, is the uh, outer space, the galaxies. And then the third heaven, which Paul, he, in a vision, went to the third heaven. That's where Jesus dwells. And that place is always there. Why does it have to be a, a new heaven and a new earth? Why does it, there has to be that, you know, transformation? It's because all of the wickedness that was going on. God has to melt that up and recreate something that's perfect, like his throne where he is right now in the third heaven. So it'll match, you know, and we're going to be with him for all eternity. In the new heaven, we'll be on the new earth. We're going to be able to travel and praise God and worship for all eternity. We're going to be there for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the devil, his time is short. Right now, he's preparing to get the Antichrist on the earth. And he's going to you know, try to wreak havoc and get people to take the mark of the beast. But what we need to do is keep our eyes open. Continue to watch because Jesus is going to return. He's going to come back for you and me. And it's an exciting time, beloved. So I just want to encourage you to know that the devil is defeated he's under your feet and he's under God's feet and he is powerless unless God allows him to uh you know to get out of the bottomless pit and he gives him a chance to deceive the nations that's all he can do but then God puts a stop to it and you know what God is on our side let's keep our eyes up Jesus is coming back for you if this devotion encouraged you again I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and God bless you as you continue follow him.